Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Live Training Session 2100. This is the beginning of a new series. This is the overview, and this is on raw power by gentleman coders. So first off, real quick, for those of you watching live, we do actually have Nick, the developer from Raw Power, in the chat room today. So if you have any questions that I can't answer or you just want to get answered while I'm in the middle of the show, pop them into the Q&A. Make sure you at both Photo Joseph and Gentleman Coders, and we will both see that question highlighted on our screens, and one of us will be able to help you out. Also, I wanted to tell you that, first of all, let's see, if you want to get this from the App Store, this is what you're looking for over on the App Store. It's called Raw Power. You see it's got a very nice rating up here, and it's quite high in the ranking for photography apps, and it is actually going to be on sale for just one week starting this Saturday through the following Saturday. This is a special that Nick has put together for the guests of this show, although this is going to be available for anybody. On macOS, the price will drop from $29.99 down to $19.99. iOS, it'll be $2.99 down to $1.99. And there are two in-app purchases available to add extra features, normally $1.99 each, and they will be on sale for just $0.99. Cents. So again, that's March 2nd through 9th. That is this coming Saturday to the following Saturday. So if you don't yet have the app, that is your chance to get it on the cheap. So with that, we're going to jump into the overview. Again, this is an overview session, which means we're going to be going pretty quickly. We're going to take a high level view. We're not going to dive deep into any specific features. The point is, I want you to see what is there, what the app is capable of. And then starting next week, we will go into the deep dives on individual components, individual functionality, individual workflow, whatever the app needs to make sure that you know absolutely everything there is to know about it. So with that said, let us begin. And we are going to be starting in Apple Photos. Now, you might be thinking, why in the world would you be starting in Apple Photos? I thought this was an app. It is an app. And you actually can use it standalone. Although today, I'm not even going to show it to you standalone. We're going to use it entirely from within Apple Photos, because this is where its real power lies. <laughs> power. See what I did there? You have the ability to use raw power as a raw decoder even though you're using Apple Photos. This isn't normally how things work. And I'm going to show you the right way and the wrong way to send a photo from Apple Photos over to raw power. If you send it the wrong way, you're not sending the raw file. What you want to do is send the raw file so that you have access to the full raw decoding that's in there. And I think it's also worth pointing out that the person behind all this, Nick from Gentleman Coders, is the former lead engineer on Apple's Aperture. Back in the day, for those of us that still pine for the days of Aperture, the engineering behind that was uh, Nick was the lead on that. So there is a lot of Aperture familiarity in here. So for anyone out there who is using Apple Photos, hasn't moved to something else, likes Apple Photos, but just wants more, wants more power, then this is definitely, definitely the app for you. So let's go back into it. So we're going to start by just taking this picture here. And I'll double click on that, and then click on the Edit button, and then go to the three dots up here to access raw power. Now, this is important. You do have to do it that way. You have to go through those steps. You can't just open it from the browser view. You can't open it into raw power as a raw file with out first going into the edit mode. It's unfortunate, but it is a limitation of how Apple Photos works and how it handles extensions. So that's just the way that it is. But with that said, once I select raw power, it is going to package up that original raw file and send it off to raw power. And you'll notice that we're not launching another app. We are actually working inside of Photos. You see up here it still says Photos. Uh, but up here, we can see that we're in raw power. Now, another thing I want to point out in here, now that we're in this, is the fact that we do have this raw processing engine here. So you see up here, it says raw processing. That's how I know that I'm actually looking at a raw image. Before I do anything to this, let me cancel out of here. And I want to show you the wrong way to go about doing this. If I had, it's just done from here, if I had just from this view or from the thumbnail view, gone to the image menu and chosen edit with, and then chosen raw power, it's somewhere in here, chosen raw power from here, it would create a JPEG file. Or, if, let's say that I'm in the editor, and then I make a change to the image here using the Apple tools, and then I choose to send it off to raw power, I am also not going to be sending off the raw image. I'm going to be sending off a rendered version of this. And you're going to know that you've done this. You're going to know you've made this mistake two different ways. First of all, you notice that the raw decoding controls are missing. Also up here, you have a little yellow triangle that tells you, hey, buddy, this is not a raw file. So that's how you know you've made a mistake. If that happens, you can cancel out of here, revert the image, just click on revert to original over here, and then jump back in, go into raw power, and it will send that original. So yes, there's a little bit of a, you got to be careful. Um, 
not the developer's fault. This is just an Apple limitation. It's the way things work within Photos. You do have to go into that editing mode, and you do have to um, you do have to do it from that little uh, three dots menu, the More menu, if you will, not from the Open with. It's just the way that it is. Okay. So now that we're in here. Let's take a look at what we've got. We're going to go through these um, very quickly, one by one. But before we go into those, I want to talk a little bit about the raw processing tool that you have here. So zoom in quite close to this, and you'll see the tools that we have. There's a boost control, black boost, black point, lumen noise, color noise, detail, moiré, raw sharpen, raw contrast, and then a gamut thing, which we're definitely not getting into today. But the boost right here is the most important tool. And I know that because if I click on this little eye, it says boost is a very important control. Boost is essentially taking your flat raw file. So anyone out there who knows anything about raw files knows that they are by design meant to be quite flat so that you can do a lot with them in post-processing. This boost is a built-in fixer, if you will, of the raw file to take the raw file from its base form and make it look good. Now, every raw decoder to some degree does this. Most raw decoders do not necessarily give you control over that. So what you have in here is a boost slider so you can turn it up or turn it down a little bit. And I chose this image specifically because in my mind, this image is a little bit oversaturated. It's a little bit too poppy in its current state right here. So I might want to go up here to the boost slider and drag it down a little bit to pull out some of that saturation and pull out some of that contrast. And this is happening at the raw decode level. That's the important thing about this. It's not happening after the raw decode, after the, de the debayer process. This is happening at the raw decode level, so it's the best possible quality for that fix. And in fact, anything that you can do inside of the raw control, inside of the uh, raw processing sliders, you should do there. So you do as much as you can there and then move on. Now, one of the things I'll point out, but we're not going to really demo today, is if you look again at this little info thing that pops up, it tells you a really good use for this is if you have an image that is overexposed and how you may want to try bringing the boost down and then doing some highlight recovery in the other sliders as opposed to leaving the boost all the way up. It just takes some of that initial big contrast push that may be pushing some of your overexposed highlights out of range. It just kind of pulls them back down a little bit so that the recovery goes a little bit easier later. And we'll go into that with a couple of different samples in the session when we dive deep into the raw power. But for now, just know that if you are working with an overexposed image, consider going up here, taking that boost slider down to at least a half, you can see 0.5 right there, or even down farther, and then playing from there. In this case, for this image, I probably would bring it up to right about there just because I kind of like the saturation at that point a little bit better. Um, black boost, so again, we're not going to go deep into each one of these, but black boost allows us to, well, as you can imagine, boost the blacks, bring a little brightness into the blacks, lower our black point in there, and you can see the kind of crushing of the blacks that happens if I go too far in one direction on there. You have noise reduction that is happening in the raw processor, but you can take more control over that, do a little bit more either luminance noise or color noise correction inside of this. So again, happening automatically, but you do have a level of extra control if you want to get into that. I'm going to actually back out of this one and grab another photo for the rest of the, uh, of the show here. Well, actually, before I do another raw photo, I almost forgot, I want to show you this one. So this, as you see up here, is a portrait photo. This was shot on the iPhone 10, the one with the dual lens, shot in the portrait mode. Now, what you may not have realized is that your phone, your iPhone, assuming you're working with an iPhone, obviously, your iPhone is capturing not only the picture, but a bunch of extra data, specifically a masking data, mask data, that it is embedding in the file, which software like, like Raw Power can actually access. So if I go in here and I go to the edit mode, You'll see here now that I'm in the, um, in the this is just the, the Apple editor, um, I can turn off the portrait mode. And there's the original photo without the second layer. There's the portrait mode photo. And, and I even have access to the same things that I have on the iPhone, changing the lighting layout, if you will. But from here, let me take this into raw power. And remember, this is not a raw file. So we're actually going to see the little dialog here telling us that we're not in a raw file. But we've gained a new control here, this thing called depth effect. And depth effect allows us to control the foreground, that's the highlights and shadows up here, and the background highlights and shadows individually, and then even control the depth mask in between them. So before I make any changes to the depth mask, I will just grab the highlights up here and drag this up and down quickly. And you can see the highlights on her face changing pretty dramatically there. The shadows, I can lift the shadows up, and you can see that on her face and on her coat changing pretty dramatically. Now I go to the background, and I take this down, and now look at the tree, or rather the skies behind her head. Now that's changing, but her face is not. Same thing with the shadows. The background shadows are changing, 
but the foreground is not. So there's this separation that's happening in there that's built into the iPhone picture. So cool. And you can actually change the level of separation. And that's what this depth slider does. And the best way to see what the depth slider is doing is to actually hold down the command key while you drag it. And then you see the actual mask. And if I take it all the way to the left so that depth is zero, you'll see that the mask goes white. And what that is effectively telling me is that I am not separating the foreground from the background at all. Any adjustments that I make to those foreground sliders are going to affect the entire image. However, if I go back over here and drag this the other way, so there's its default position, but drag the other way, notice how the background gets darker and darker to the point where the background is completely separated from the foreground. So now the background and the foreground are being handled totally independently. So if I go here to my background shadows, I'm going to now have more control over the background shadows, more control over the background highlights, separate from the foreground shadows and highlights. So just a really, really cool feature in there. If you shoot with an iPhone 10, I guess, or above with a dual, or maybe it was 8 that started this, with a dual lens or above, and you're shooting in that portrait mode, and you want to make some changes like that, you can do that without having to go in and do any kind of brushing, masking, any of those crazy things. You can do it all within this, uh, this depth effect tool in here. It's pretty, pretty slick. I love that. So that's that. Um, if I, let's see, now that I'm in here, let me go ahead and I'll make some changes, and then I'm going to save this. I'm going to hit save on here, and this is going to bring us back into Apple Photos, of course. And you'll notice here, it does still tell me that it had the contour effect applied, but I no longer have the controls on the bottom to the Apple controls to change the lighting in there. So I've, I've kind of lost that capability at this point. But if I hit reverts to, revert to original, everything, of course, is non-destructive. And so now we get back to our default photo with the portrait mode and so on and so on. So just so you know, everything you're doing in here is always non-destructive. All the changes you make are non-destructive. You can revert at any time. Let's open up another photo here back to the edit mode, and back to the three dots, and to, where do we go? Raw power we go. All right, very quickly, we're going to take a tour through the rest of the interface. As soon as the interface loads, here we go. You'll see up here at the top, you have things like the ability to rotate your image. Uh, there's a before and after right here if you press and hold this. So if I make a change, let me just do something really dramatic and obvious up here. If I press and hold this button here or press the M key on the keyboard, that will show us the original. And for anyone wondering why it's the M key, any old Aperture users out there will remember. It's M for master. Thanks, Nick, for giving us a little throwback to the good old days there. All right, so let's, uh, let me just reset this. Down at the bottom here, you have the reset button. You have a series of presets you can apply in here, and these are just presets that Nick has come up with, um, as well as white balance presets. So just pointing that out, the white balance presets are here, not down here under the white balance menu. We already looked at raw processing a little bit. There's a lot we can do in the histogram. That's stuff that we're going to explore in a future course, in a future uh, video. But let's just take a look at what else, what else is in here. So you got your white balance adjustments, as you would expect, kind of, kind of pretty standard white balance, temperature and tint control. You've got an eyedropper here, so you can click on something that should be known white if you want to do it that way. Under the tone controls, you have your standard exposure, highlight, shadow, details, and then recovery. Now, this is kind of a cool one. So we've seen highlight recovery before. But you notice there's a highlight, shot, a highlight slider and a recovery slider, two different sliders. They're doing, it's the same basic idea, is for getting those highlights, that brightest data, back down into range. But the recovery slider is an even narrower range of data. So this is one thing I do want to show you a little bit more closely. Let me take the exposure up to overexpose it a bit. And I'll look at the histogram up here. And watch as I move the highlight slider. There's a fair amount of data that is moving, fair amount of highlight data that is moving up and down as I slide that. Recovery, on the other hand, is doing a much more precise area. It's a much narrower band of data that is being affected by that. So this is something very, very important to, uh, to recognize. If you're going to be doing this, working with the photo in here, and you have some highlight recovery to do, don't forget about the actual recovery slider in there. Under basics, you have your brightness, control, uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, and vibrancy. Vibrancy, of course, is saturation minus skin tones. So if you are playing with saturation on an image and your people in the picture are starting to look a little bit too orange, then you might want to switch over. You are going to want to switch over to the vibrancy instead of saturation. Under enhance, you'll find definition. So this is uh, something we've seen a lot of. It's essentially micro contrast. It's contrast at a very fine level to make it appear sharper. And it just adds more, well, definition, kind of depth to it. But then there's two other sliders here we don't usually see. And I like the, the descriptions Nick's put in here. So under deepen, it says adds a richness to the image. And it's really just taking those kind of darkest areas and making them darker, but really inside of those fine, fine details. 
and then lighten, and this is under enhance, so this is not your brightness, but it says lightens the image, and again, it's just affecting those brightest areas. It's actually a really nice couple of sliders. I would say if you're just looking to add a little bit of punch to a photo, going into the enhance and playing with those three sliders could give you all the results that you want. It's really quite a nice series of, of sliders in there. Curves is going to be worthy of its own show in its entirety, but I want to show you quickly. You have a couple things in here that you really don't find outside of quite high-end apps. So you have an auto levels that is, or auto, well, auto curves based off of luminance only. You have an auto curves based off of RGB, so the red, green, and blue curves each handled individually. You can look at your red, green, or blue channels individually in here. You can do a gamma or a linear curve. You can do sampling to sample a known black, white, or middle gray point. You can set a target point to find something specific on the curve in here. There's really quite a lot that we can do in here that you really don't usually find outside of really high-end apps. So for the $30 or even $20 if you're getting it on sale next week, and just in case anybody came in late and missed that, uh, this is going to be next week. So if you're watching this live, it's March 2nd to March 9th. If you're not watching this live, then that's the window, March 2nd to 9th, to get that. Normally $29.99 on macOS, dropping to $19.99. iOS from $2.99 to $1.99, and both in-app purchases down to $0.99 cents each. And there's two of those, once again, inside of that. So if you're going to get it, you don't have it now, on Saturday, that's your day. All right, back in. So a ton in curves, absolutely a ton. We will want to play with that later on. Black and white, very nice black and white control in here. We have a few presets, but uh, things like what it would look like with a red filter on it. But you have individual control over the RGB channels to affect the brightness of each one of those channels, affecting how the image renders out in black and white. If you've never done black and white conversions before this way, you end up with a lot of power. You can do a lot of cool things and really make your image pop using these three sliders here. You have sharpen, simple, one slider, make the sh image sharper. As always, you can easily over sharpen an image. Make sure that you're zooming in to 100% before you do any sharpening to an image or you will very quickly over sharpen it and it will look terrible. So be careful of that. Always, always, always zoom into 100% when you're doing your sharpening. All right, let's back out of this. There we go. Chromatic aberration, so if you're getting any chromatic aberration, again, this is something we'll show in a future demo, in a future show. We'll dive into this more deeply and I'll show you exactly how to use it, but we do have the ability to eliminate chromatic aberration if that shows up in a photo. Crop and straighten, I do want to do something in here. This is a nice cropping tool. Let me, uh, let me just do a quick reset on this and bring up the crop tool here. So you have some aspect ratio choices, kind of your standard, you know, is it a 4, 5, or 9 by 16 aspect ratio, whatever it might be. You can swap the ratio out, so if you want to do it wider or so on. Um, you, but you can punch in your own custom ratios and sizes in here, which is really nice, because that's actually something you don't see in a lot of apps. I'm come to think of it, I'm pretty sure that Photos itself doesn't have custom crop I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that it doesn't have custom crop ratios, which is crazy, but you have it in here, which is really, really nice. So if you're wanting to export something for a specific ratio, like if you're going to um, to Twitter, it's nine, 16 by 9 is your standard. If you're going to Instagram Story, it's 9 by 16. If you're going to Instagram, a 5-4 ratio is optimal. Lots of different ratios for different social media platforms that are optimal. And I'm quite sure that in photos, you can't choose all of them. You can't make your own, but here you can, which is lovely. But more interesting than this, what I wanted to show you is this little straighten tool here. When I click on this, I get a thing that says draw a line of, on the image to straighten it. Now, I can draw either a horizontal line or a vertical line. So in this case, let's say I want to, uh, we'll do it vertically. We'll do it down the door here. So I just draw that line and I go, yeah, let's line that up perfectly straight. Put that on there, give it a second, and it will straighten out that image. Straighten out that image. It will do it. Oh, I think, do I have to exit out of here? Okay, let's try that again. Cancel. Oh, I, didn't, I have to hit apply. I knew that. One more try, this time with feeling. Here we go, pull that down. Oh, well, that's what's happening, the apply button. There we go, hit return. The apply, that little dialogue's disappearing. Actually, I think that might be a bug. Nick, you wanna work on that one? I don't think that's supposed to disappear because the apply button goes away. But if you hit return, it accepts it. But same thing, we can go the other way. Let me reset that. I will grab this. I will go horizontal across this way like so. Let's actually fix that, straighten that out a little bit better like so there. Hit return and that straightens that out. There it is, all good. Gentleman Coders is saying he will look into that. Thank you, sir. So that is a really nice tool. It's quite often that you pull up an image where the horizon is just a little bit wonky. And sometimes, especially if it's a very slight adjustment, it can be really, really hard to grab the rotation tool and rotate it that 0.7 degree that it needs. 
But this way, you have, especially if you have a really wide horizon line or really long vertical line to go off of, you can just drag that out and make sure it's really precise and then hit apply and lock that in. So I like that feature. That's why I wanted to show that to you in there. You also have perspective control in here, which is something else we don't usually see outside of higher end apps. So this allows me to do a little vertical distortion or horizontal distortion. Now, it's kind of hard to see exactly what's happening, especially for this photo in this view. But you'll see down here, we have vertical and horizontal, and then something called scale factor. And if I bring the scale factor up, we're effectively zooming out of the image so that as I do the vertical, it's no longer cropping. So you can see if I do just a little bit of there, what's happening. So we're not cropping the image. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to go in and crop it out myself to get rid of the black edges. But I have a little bit more visual control over the end result of the image. And you can see you're effectively moving this thing around in 3D space to tilt it and distort it into the way that you need it to be. And then finally, at the bottom, we have a vignette tool, which is both a vignette and a devignetting tool. So we can devignette, brighten up the edges if we need to, or vignette it, darken those edges down. So those are the extent of what I want to show you today inside of Raw Power out of, uh, out of Photos in Mac OS. But before we leave today, I want to show you how this integrates over with iOS, because you've seen in the slides that we do have, uh, that there is an iOS version as well as the Mac OS version. And you might be thinking, OK, that's cool, but they're totally separate from each other, right? Not really. Watch what we can do here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and make a dramatic change so that we know it's changed. Um, let me go in and let's go to the crop tool. Let's just do that. So crop, we'll do a 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 crop. Let's actually rotate that so it actually is a 16 9 crop. Go into the cropping tool and let's position this where we want. Oh, and also, uh, again, there's that, there's that bug, unfortunately. But let me hit return and go back into this again. This box shouldn't be disappearing. But when the cropping tool is up, I like this. It shows me what the final resolution is of the file, not resolution, but the, um, the, well, yeah, the resolution, the megapixel count of that image once it's been cropped. So you know if you're cropping it, you know, how much you're cropping out. That's kind of cool. Anyway, all right, so apply that. So there, there, that's in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Save Changes on here. And we are, of course, going to see that image back in Photos. Click on Done. Back to the thumbnail view. So there is that thumbnail there in Apple Photos. So that's already been changed there. Now I'm going to fire up my iPad here. And let me get to that album. There we go. And let's see here. Where is it? Well, there we go. Raw power. So okay, there you can see the thumbnail. Unfortunately, when I touch the screen, you're not going to see the touch because Apple hasn't given us that capability. But you can see that there's the three images that I had. Right, If we look back at the Mac, there's those three uh, back over here. Honestly, I know my presets. It's that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, we can see the same three photos here. So if I tap on this picture here and I go to edit it, I'm going to lose the raw power edit editing capability. It's going to overwrite what I've done there. It's going to start editing in Apple Photos, which doesn't bake anything in, but it will take away the ability to go into raw power and make any changes. But So I'm not going to do that. Let me back out of here. So I'm looking at this photo. I'm now going to open up the raw power app, the raw power iOS app. And let's find that photo. Um, it's up there in my, under my recently viewed. Oh, actually, there's my recent, even recent albums, Raw Power Demo. So open that. There's that picture. Open this here and tap on Edit up in the top right. Give that a moment to load. Probably has to download the raw file because iCloud tends to not keep the raw files around. And we are going to see the same editing capabilities that we had over there on the desktop here on iOS with these controls applied into there. So the actual editing data is stored within that file. So here we go down on the right hand side. You can see crop is highlighted in blue because that's something I've applied. If I open that up, you'll see there we go. I can go in here now and uh, let's just recrop it. So we'll, we'll just do a different, uh, we'll do a different crop on here. Let's go for a, uh, let's see what I want to do. We'll just, I don't know. We'll just do a totally different crop. Let's go in here for a 3 4 crop ratio, crop that up like so. Hit OK on that. OK, so I've clearly recropped the image. Um, let's do something else. Let's go black and white on it just to really like really drive the point home that we have made a change in here. I'm going to hit Done up in the top right corner. It asked me, can it modify the image? Yes, it can. That's something you always see on iOS. Any, any app that's going to access that image externally will update there. Now, we can already see over on the Mac, it's starting to change. Now, this is interesting. It's, we haven't seen the whole thing draw through yet, but there it goes. Now the whole thing is drawn through. Now, one of what's interesting about this, I love live demos. What's interesting about this is that we actually saw it update right away. Because every time I did this before getting ready for today, it wouldn't update until I launched Apple Photos on iOS. It was like it needed to see that to read it. 
But of course, now that it's live, it works the way it's supposed to work. So hey, for once, it worked better live than it normally does. But I will tell you this, if you do something like this, because remember, we weren't in Apple Photos. We were in Raw Power as a separate app accessing the Apple Photos database. If, however, you are doing something in Raw, Photo, uh, Raw Power, you make a change and you're not seeing it over on the desktop, just launch Apple Photos on iOS so that way it refreshes it, it'll update the database and you should see that change pretty quickly. And remember, it's not syncing the photo back and forth. The photo's already in the, in the cloud and presumably on both devices. It's just the metadata that's going back and forth in there. So that's really neat. So we've seen that through there. And of course, at this point, I could open it here, continue editing, make other changes to it, revert it, whatever I wanted to do. So that, my friends, is everything that I wanted to show you in here. Let me bring this up one more time just to remind you about the sale, March 2nd through 9th. Uh, that is uh, from $29.99 down to $19.99 or $2.99 down to $1.99 and the in-app purchase is only 99 cents, so definitely check that out. So anybody's got any questions, now is your chance. If you haven't popped them up already, I've seen some chats going by on here. Let's see if there's anything that anyone had asked that I need to address. And I know Nick, thank you very much, sir, has been in here addressing any potential questions. Uh, let's see, Shark, I guess a rival product for our power would be Adobe Camera Raw 11.2, both for Mac and PC. So, right, there, uh, this is on Mac only. This is not on PC. But of course, you don't have Adobe Camera Raw on iOS, right? So there's that. Um, also, Adobe Camera Raw doesn't work as an extension to Apple Photos. So Adobe Camera Raw, great raw decoder, of course, but it is not, well, first of all, it's not an asset manager. If you're using Adobe Camera Raw within, within an asset manager, that would be Lightroom. But if you're using Apple Photos and you want a more advanced raw tool, well, then this is how you do it. This is the way to go. Um, oh, Gentleman Coder saying that LUT support is coming 3.0. Very exciting. So this is version 2.0, by the way, or 2. Point something, close enough to 2.0. It's version 2. Uh, that's awesome. The, the LUTs are coming in 3.0. Excellent, excellent. Uh, very good. And D. Jordan is asking, is this recorded? Yes, absolutely. The recorded version of the show will be uploaded on Saturday, March 2nd, the first day of the sale, 9 a.m. at photojoseph.com. You'll be able to find it there. All right, guys. So that is all there is to it. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, if you have any other questions that come up, you can feel free to post them on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere where you can find us. Uh, you can ask me directly or feel free to ask Gentleman Coders as they're out there as well. And after all, it's his app, so he can probably answer the questions better than I can. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.